like, and subscribe if you see something that interests you. For today's first project, we're going to be creating a bunny pillow. I picked up this set of four placemats at the Target dollar spot, and I'm going to be using two for this pillow. So the first thing I'm going to do before I create my pillow is make a shabby bow. I'm going to be putting this shabby bow on my bunny here on the front. I actually make two of these because there are two sides to this pillow, and just in case you had it uh, either way, you can um, display it either side of the pillow. So once I get my ribbons all together, then I just take some twine, I tie it off in the middle, and then I'm going to um, add it to the ears of the bunny on my placemat. These are really simple bows to make. I just am using ribbon today, but later on in the video you can see that I go ahead and use some fabric as well. And I like to use the fabric because it becomes like a really fun, like full bushy bow. Um, to cover the middle, I just took a little bit of the green ribbon and covered up the twine. I think that adds a little bit more of a finished look. You can do it either way. Sometimes I add buttons here. You can also add um, like another embellishment there. I just thought the green kind of was an, a nice touch there for the middle. So then I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue it to the middle of my bunny ears and then I'm ready to assemble my pillow. So I did do this for both sides of the placemats like I said. So now I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to glue on the seam of the placemat and then I'm going to attach the other placemat to that seam. It's very simple. Um, I have a very hot glue gun, so uh, make sure if you have a very hot glue gun, you're just careful not to burn yourself here, but all you're going to do is line up the edges and glue them together. So once I have the three sides glued together, I'm ready to fill my pillow, and I'm just using some polyfill that I had left over in my stash. You can pick this up at Walmart, Hobby Lobby. You can also use um, stuffing from another pillow or an actual pillow if you have one that fits this form. You're going to add it as much or as little of the polyfill as you want to the desired thickness of your pillow. And then we're going to take our hot glue gun and glue the final edge of the pillow together. And then I'm going to show you here how I styled it. For project number two, we're going to be making a stuffed bunny, so we're going to take another one of those placemats in that pack of four, and we're going to cut out the bunny from the placemat. So I go ahead and leave about a half an inch around the bunny. I do go ahead and trim that a little bit smaller once I get into creating the bunny, but then I'm going to take some buffalo check fabric and cut around the cutout that I just made to give it a back. Once I have that cut out, then I'm just going to do the same technique as my pillow, and I'm going to use my hot glue gun and glue around the edges of my bunny. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my polyfill again, and I'm going to stuff my bunny with the polyfill. I do go ahead and leave the bottom open, obviously, so we can get our polyfill in there. The ears are pretty tight up at the top because they're such a small space, so you might want to use a pencil or something like that to get the polyfill into the ears. If your bunny opens at some seams, mine did a little bit, that's okay. You can just go ahead and take your hot glue gun and fix that once you get the polyfill in. Then I took a piece of fabric that I cut and ripped to give it the frayed look and I'm just going to tie it around the bunny's neck, give it a loopy bow, and then I'll show you how I styled it here. Like you always do. Today's video is part of the Bunnies Hopping Around the World collab put on by my friend Deco Easy. There will be a link down in the playlist to check out all of the videos from these amazing creators so that you can get lots of inspiration for spring decorating. For project number three, we're going to do a jar makeover. So I'm just taking a pasta jar that I had in my stash and then I'm going to use some spray paint. If you use spray paint that has a primer in it, it should only take about one coat. And then I'm going to take some antique white 
um, acrylic paint and a chippy brush and I'm going to paint over the entire jar with that. Once I have all my paint on the jar, I do go ahead and use an acrylic sealer from rust -Oleum, but if you don't have that, Mod Podge would work just fine here. Once I get that all painted onto my jar, I'm going to take some fabric and I'm going to wrap the fabric around the top part of the jar and then we're going to make a shabby bow with our fabric. To get the shabby look, all you're going to do is tear your fabric so that it has some rough edges and then you're going to just crisscross them and make a shabby bow like normal. Then I took these tags that I printed off my computer and I will leave those down in a link in my description box. All I'm going to do is hot glue them to the top of the jar and then glue my shabby bow over the top of that. If I spend For our fourth project, we're going to create a vintage Easter can, and I'm going to start out with just a tin can that I had in my stash from a can of vegetables. Then I'm going to take my antique white acrylic paint and my chippy brush, and I'm going to cover the entire can with the paint. Then I'm going to take a free printable that I got from my computer, and I will link that link down in my description box as well. And I'm going to take some Mod Podge and glue it onto my can. Then I'm going to go back to my chippy brush that still has some paint in it and I'm going to lightly go over the image to give it that really nice vintage look and then I will show you here how I styled it. For our fifth and final project, I'm going to create a bunny hanger and I'm going to use the last placemat from that pack of four placemats and a piece of wood that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to hot glue the placemat onto the piece of wood at the very top edge of it and then into the middle part of it so that the hanger is adhered all the way to the wood piece and there won't be any flapping around when we go to hang it up. Next we're going to take some nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to add it to the back for our hanger piece. Next we're going to take some more of the nautical rope and we're going to tie a knot in it and then we're going to hot glue it to the front where it looks like our hanger piece is coming through from the back. So it looks like we have knotted our placemat into place of the wood. This is a really fun trick to make it look like it goes through even though you don't have to do the extra work to make it do that. Then we're going to go ahead and add one of those to each side so that it is symmetrical and then we're going to go ahead and make another shabby bow using our fabric again. We're just crisscrossing it, taking some twine, tying that off in the middle and then we're going to add it up into the left hand corner of our um, hanger. I'm curious to know if you guys like to put your bows or embellishments on the left hand side of your project or the right hand side of your project. I'm left handed so I always seem to put mine on the left hand side. I was just curious if my right handed friends like to put it on the right hand side. So once I get that glued up onto the left hand corner, I'm going to take one more embellishment and I'm gonna use a button, a kind of large button. This is like a brownish black button. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it into the middle and then I will show you here how I styled it. Like you always do. Now, and I want you 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 now, and
Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today we're going to be creating some spring DIYs and we're going to start with a bird's nest wreath. So believe it or not, I have never made a clothespin wreath before and so I decided to try one out. I picked up two packages of clothespins at Dollar Tree and then some of my favorite spray paint. I am outside spraying these. They are in a box. I just give them one really good coat and then I shake up the box and can continue that process for about four coats. It does take quite a while for these to dry especially since I live in a colder climate and they weren't totally all the way dry when I went to start to assemble this wreath but that is okay not all of them have the same coverage of spray paint either but we're going to dry brush them in a few minutes and so it really doesn't matter if some of the clothespins are more saturated with the spray paint than others so we're going to attach these to the wreath form. This is a 12 inch wreath, wreath form from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to attach them to the bottom two metal pieces of the wreath. So it takes about 12 clothespins to go from each section or in each section. And so it does take the full two packages of clothespins to complete this wreath. So once I get all of the clothespins onto the wreath, then I'm going to take some white acrylic paint. This is just paint that I had on hand and a chippy brush and I'm going to dry brush around the entire wreath. So this is so much easier having them attached to the wreath than trying to dry brush them individually. Um, it, it goes really, really fast. Once I get that all dry brushed, then I'm going to set it aside to let it dry a little bit and I'm going to work on the bird's nest. So for the bird's nest, I took a styrofoam ball that I picked up at Walmart. This styrofoam ball was the medium sized styrofoam ball. They have like a large one and then they have like a smaller one. <laughs> I went for the medium size. I didn't quite cut it in half. It's about a third of the styrofoam ball and I did shave off the bottom and then I'm going to take out the inside of the um, styrofoam ball. So once I have that all out, I'm going to take some Spanish moss. This is one that I had on hand. They do sell it at the Dollar Tree. They also sell it at Hobby Lobby and it does go on sale uh, pretty regularly. You can also pick it up on Amazon and I will link a link down in my description box for the Amazon um, product. So then you're just going to take your desired amount, put some hot glue on your styrofoam and then glue your Spanish moss into it. Um, Spanish moss is messy so you definitely want to have some kind of container or something down on your surface so that you can have easy cleanup but you're just going to do the inside then I flipped it over to the outside and then I flipped it on its side and just filled in any kind of white pieces from the styrofoam that were there because you don't want any of the white to be showing. Once I have that all covered then I went ahead and um, put it onto the wreath I am taking some eggs that I had left over in my stash. I believe these came from Hobby Lobby. The Dollar Tree also sells some um, similar eggs. They also have some sparkly eggs if you'd rather have sparkly eggs. I just went ahead and glued them into the wreath. And then I made a bow. If you've been following me for my last few videos, I tried out a new bow technique. And I will have the video down in my description box of the full tutorial of how I made the bow. But I made this bow without wired ribbon and the technique worked just as well so I was super excited for that um, I just absolutely love this bow and it's super easy so I just make it into three sections attach it together with a uh, zip tie and then I dovetailed the ends and I'm just going to hot glue it to the clothespins right above the uh, nest and then this wreath is complete I think this turned out absolutely adorable I love just it's simple and um, it just has like a really fun farmhouse look so let me know down in the comments if you liked this one or not spring floral arrangement and this is a super easy project. I'm going to take a vase from the Dollar Tree and then a paper towel holder. I measured the paper towel holder to be the um, size of the vase and then it was a little too wide um, to fit any of my filler in there so I just cut the paper towel holder in half, wound it around a little bit and then used some hot glue to glue it in place. I want to still have a hole there big enough to fit any of my greenery that I'm going to put in but um, I needed to make it a little bit smaller so that I can fit the filler around it. Um, you could use tape here too if you didn't want to use hot glue. 
once I get it into the vase, then I'm just going to go around the paper towel holder with my vase filler. This vase filler came from the Dollar Tree, and it was just some that I had left over, but I did see it out this year again. Um, it is the spring or Easter vase filler. So I'm going to go ahead, fill the entire vase up with that, and then I am ready to add in some florals. So for my florals, I decided to use some lamb's ear. I'm only using one bundle from Walmart. And then I had these pink and white lilies that I had also gotten at the Dollar Tree. And I thought that that would look really pretty together. So I just layered in my lamb's ear first. I kept my um, bundles of my lilies together and I just kind of bent the end and then put them all together in a bundle into the paper towel holder. I flared them out and but you know made them look full so that you don't want to see any of the paper towel holder. You can see a tiny bit underneath the florals um, but if you can get it covered up you want to cover it up and then this is how it turned out. I think it's adorable. I had been holding on to these lilies for quite some time and I really love how they actually ended up turning out. Today we're going to be creating a watering can that I picked up at the Goodwill and this was $2.99 and I'm going to um, use some spray adhesive first to cover the whole thing that way my paint sticks to it a little bit better and then I'm just using some antique white acrylic paint and I did give it about three coats. Once I have that covered I did pick up these stencils at Michael's and they were in the clearance area for three dollars. They are folk art stencils and then I will post down in my description box a stencil that is either the same one or something similar if I'm able to find it. So I'm using some black acrylic paint and I'm just using the one bird stencil here. And I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And once I let it dry, I go over it with my sanding block just to make sure that it doesn't look too stark black. That it gives it a more uh, vintage look and more distressed look older look um, once I take off some of that newer paint. Then I made a shabby bow just with some uh, Dollar Tree ribbons that I had on hand and I'm going to attach that to the top and then I'm going to show you guys here what it looks like on its own and then how I have styled it. making this wooden window and I picked this up at the Target dollar spot for five dollars. So I'm using some antique Waverly wax that I had on hand and I'm just going to cover the entire window. I did do both sides um, just in case this was sitting. If you saw my shabby uh, tea party idea this was on the table undecorated at the time so you never know if you're going to need both sides. Then I covered it again with my antique uh, white acrylic paint and then I'm just going to take my sandy block and I'm going to go all around my wooden window to get it as much of a vintage look as possible. So I have it here all by itself and then I'm going to show you what it looks like styled with some of the other things I had on hand. When we don't feel Going to be creating this metal bunny. This was actually free from my mom's yard. I was helping her do some cleanup, and this was just a broken uh, little bunny yard stake that she had. And I decided to go ahead and take it home and give it some love. I thought it definitely had shabby, chic French country possibilities. So I originally wanted to try the candle wax technique for chipping. Um, on this project but I forgot to paint it with a darker color I and so the um, the technique didn't work I did rub my candle on here you just can't really tell um, 
that any paint came off of it. So I went ahead and got my sanding block out and I'm just going over kind of the edges with my sanding block and some of the raised areas around the bunny. So part of this had some pink and white in it before I painted it the antique white and so I just wanted some of the pink to show through. So here's my handy helper today. If you don't know, this is Mr. Oreo. I, I like to call him Little Kitty, but he is my crafting buddy, and he has decided to join me for the ribbons because he absolutely loves ribbons. He thinks it's his toys. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and make a shabby bow, and I'm just crisscrossing a bunch of extra ribbons. All my ribbons came from Dollar Tree today, and um, these are just ones I had on hand. And then I'm going to take a piece of twine and just tie that off in the middle. I like to um, go ahead and put something in the middle of my shabby bow. Now there's a couple of possibilities. I used buttons today, but you can also take just a small piece of the ribbon and wrap it around in the middle too, and I think that that adds a really nice finished look as well. So once I get that clipped off, I'm just going to glue this shabby bow to his neck to give him some cuteness and again a ivory button in the middle. And then here is uh, the bunny all completed and then I go ahead and sh show you some of it with it styled with the other pieces from today. And if you didn't know, Home with Rebecca Jane actually has a website where she creates wood pieces. Um, they are absolutely amazing and today I'm going to be creating one of her kits for this video. So we are going to start out by making this really cute carrot banner and I will list the um, paint colors down in the description box but I just went ahead. I'm using um, chalk paint for all of the paint today. So the top is um, just a very light green color and then I'm using my orange Waverly chalk paint to paint the carrots. Then I went ahead and took some string. This string just came from the Dollar Tree. I put it on a needle and I'm going to go ahead and string it through the little holes that are on the top of the carrot. Um, and then once I get them all on the piece of string, then I'm going to attach them to my tiered tray. My tiered tray today did come from Target and here it is styled on the tray. In project we're going to be creating the jelly bean jar and this jar um, is so super cute so each of the pieces come separately and then you're just going to paint all of them together I am using a French linen chalk paint that is in the folk art brand I picked it up at Hobby Lobby and then I did try to paint the letters on the jelly bean jar I think that my paintbrush was a little bit too big so I just decided to switch to a sharpie marker I went ahead and col um, colored in the jelly bean wording and and then I have all the separate jelly beans here on my table and I just went ahead and picked out three um, chalk paint colors that I really liked and then I separated them and painted them into the colors. And then the rest is really just assembly and you can just assemble them however you would like. I kind of uh, went back and forth between the colors so that they were all kind of mixed up in the jar. And then her projects or her pieces come with these really amazing um, backing pieces that help them stand up. Up, so you don't have to prop them against anything. They are freestanding, which is really amazing because they fit um, really anywhere and they look awesome with those stands. So here's the jelly bean jar styled so that you can check out how that looks. The next two projects are signed. This one is going to be the Shake Your Bunny Tail sign. And all I did was take my chalk paint and paint over one coat over the entire thing. So as you can see, they are laser cut into the wood pieces. The really awesome part about that is that once you paint over them, you can still see the lettering and it helps you line up the other pieces that came with it. So I took my purple, I think it's lavender actually, chalk paint from Waverly and I went ahead and did the frame and then I'm going to go ahead and paint the bunny's rear end and 
um, feet and the tail all white. I do go back and add some of my ballet slipper onto its toes and its tail at the very end. And then I use the ballet slipper color to also do the wording. If you can see here, you can still see the wording popping up from the sign, which is amazing because then you're going to take your laser cut words and you're just going to glue them over the etching part and to assemble it. And then you're going to assemble the back piece to have it stand up. And then here it is styled in my tray. Like you always do. Project number four is the Happy Easter sign, and this was probably the easiest project in the whole kit that I received, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take my French linen chalk paint again, and I'm just going to cover that over the entire sign, and then I used white for the ears, the feet, and then my ballet slipper for the pink. I was going for a theme here. You know, the awesome part about these pieces and these kits is that you can design it to be any style that you want. I always seem to have a matching style when I make the so these all match but they wouldn't have to if you didn't want to but here it is styled in my tear tray So our fifth project today is a cottonwood farm sign and this is really cute. It's a little like sign that points you in all kinds of directions. So I start out with my um, country linen chalk paint to do just the sign part and then I take my various colors that I have sitting out and I'm going to paint each of the arrows a different color. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my sharpie marker again and I go and I color in all the outline parts as well as the letters on each one of the arrows and then I'm going to go ahead and assemble that. The farms on the cottonwood farm sign is actually laser cut out so I did paint that black and then I'm just going to go ahead and glue them onto the sign. Um, I decided it was easiest to put my hot glue onto the stick part and then glue my arrow down. That way you can kind of adjust it if you need to adjust it. And then it also comes with a little stand that goes in the back and you're just going to attach that. And here it is styled in my tear tray. My world is spinning round, round, round. Oh, I want you now, now, now. My world is spinning round, round. So for the final project today, it's an Easter gnome. And so I'm going to go ahead and start out with my lavender chalk paint to paint the shiplap. I don't paint over the entire thing this time because I want the black lines to really stick out. But again, you could and you could still see them um, if you paint over it all at one time. Then I'm just taking the various pieces and painting them the different colors. I used white and my ballet slipper. Um, and then for my Easter egg that he ends up holding, I did go ahead and use some Sharpie markers. You can see them there to go ahead and color the egg in. I'm not 100% happy with how my egg turned out. Definitely a user error, not part of the kit, but I wish I would have painted it instead of using the Sharpie markers just because it's a little bit darker than the rest of the color scheme I have going for these projects. But here it is styled in my tiered tray. So our first project today is this Victorian girl and this was a really simple project. I picked her up, I just wiped her off with a cloth and then I used some white Rust-Oleum spray paint to give her a much needed new look. And I think she turned out absolutely beautiful. Sometimes spray paint is all you need to create a brand new look. For project number two, we're going to create this mosaic bottle and I picked this up at the Goodwill for $1.99. I went outside and I sprayed it with some white spray paint 
and then some blue spray paint and I will list those colors down in the description box but I didn't wait for the white paint to dry before I sprayed it on the blue paint so it gives it kind of a marbled look and then I'm going to go back over it with some of my white chalk paint from folk art I love the way that it looks it gives it kind of an ombre look throughout the entire bottle then I'm taking some of this leftover placemat that I had if you saw my video a couple weeks ago, it was with the placemats. This was just a piece that was left over. I tore it up and then I took some fabric and I also tore that up to make a little shaggy uh, tassel that we're going to tie here. This is one of my favorite ways to use fabric. When you tell, tear it, you get the really fun shabby look with all the fringe. This also goes well with country if you're doing country decor or farmhouse decor, but it's really easy and it works on the majority of my those fabrics. So then I'm going to take just a couple pieces of each one of the fabrics and I'm going to um, turn it into kind of a tassel. I'm going to use my uh, jute twine and I'm going to tie it um, around the middle. I left a hole in the middle here and I'm going to take another piece of the placemat and I'm going to thread that through the hole that is up at the top and then once I get that threaded through I'm going to tie it around the top of my bottle and then this project is complete and here it is styled in my tiered tray. I'm calling it a farmhouse globe. I picked up this like soccer ball globe at the Goodwill. I believe it was $1.99 and it has these little holes in the top. I'm not really sure what they're for. My kids thought that they might be for pencils. Let me know if you guys know what they're for. But I'm just going to take some spackle from the Dollar Tree and fill in the holes and let that dry. And then I'm going to take it outside and use my spray paint again. So I'm using white and the blue color as a mixture. Again, I spray the white on. I don't let it dry all the way. And then I spray the blue on and they kind of mix together and it gives this really cool marble effect. So then I'm going to take my folk art white chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush on there. It gives it a really cool marbling look with the dry brushing. You can still see a few of the holes on the top, but we're going to fix that by adding a bow there. So the bottom pedestal part of this globe, I'm going to do the exact same thing using my white chalk paint. And then I'm just going to use my rag and brush that off. So I had some more of the leftover placemat that I'm using as some fabric to make a bow and I'm just going to glue those together to give it kind of the tail of the bow and then I created another bow out of this buffalo check fabric that I just tied into a shoelace bow and I'm going to glue that on top of the tails and once I have that glued on top of the tails then we're going to glue it to the top of the globe and it makes this really fun and unique piece for your tiered tray. Don't be afraid to buy some unique items that you see at thrift stores or garage sales because they can become some really cool tiered tray decor or just decor in general. So here it is styled in my tiered tray. For this project we're going to create a farmhouse lantern and I picked up this lantern base at the Goodwill for $1.99. I really liked the color of it and it went with the color of my other projects for today. So all I'm going to do is give it probably about two coats of the uh, white folk art chalk paint and then I'm going to use that same fabric I've been using along with these pom-poms that came from the edges of some placemats that I used in a previous project and then some white or cream ribbon I had in my stash. So then I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm just going to put it into the middle of these ribbons and I'm going to tie it off um, kind of like a tassel but I'm not going to tie it off like at the top like a tassel. I'm just going to tie it here with a knot. And then I'm going to attach these ribbons to the handle of my lantern and then I'm going to show you guys how it's styled with some flowers in my tiered tray. My flowers just came from the Dollar Tree so this was a really inexpensive project that gave a lot of like really fun um, 
aesthetic to my a vignette. So don't be afraid to pick up things um, that you can use throughout all of your decor. Like this one is something that could be used over and over in several areas. But here it is styled in my tiered tray. For this project I'm going to take a woven bag and make it with a little bag of flowers. These came in a pack of like six and we have this um, kind of a thrift place that's like an Amazon return store and that's where I picked it up. The bundle of bags was five dollars for all six or eight bags that it came with. So then I took a bundle of flowers just from the Dollar Tree. I cut them apart. You can find these at this time of the year. These are like their spring summer flowers and I'm just going to add it to this bag and then I'm going to tie this really tight so that they are uh, in there securely and then I knot the bag here at the side. Um, and then I'm going to just use a little bit more of the placemat and I'm going to just make a simple bow to put here in the middle. I just folded it over, took some twine and I'm folding it or knotting the twine in the middle to pull it tight to give it a really shabby bow and I'm just going to glue that um, into the middle. I really like this project. It gives a lot of that French farmhouse feel. Um, it's just very... And delicate and beautiful. So once you have this tied off, you're going to just hot glue that into the middle. And then here it is styled in my tiered tray. So here's my tear tray all together. I had a lot of fun with this. I don't shop at Goodwill all that often just because I feel like mine doesn't have a lot of um, like items that they put out regularly. But so it was fun to do this video shopping only there because I wanted to show you guys that even if you feel like when you thrift it's hard to find things, you can definitely pick up unique items or items that you might think don't go and just give them a little bit of a repurpose and it can totally fit your style. I'm going to be making a garden bag wreath. This could also be a gift bag and I'm going to show you how to transition it into that here um, at the end of this project. But I'm going to take the little chalkboard I received and I'm using some folk art chalk paint. I'll list all the colors down in my description box. I just went ahead and covered it with one coat of paint. And then I got this chalkboard marker from the Dollar Tree in white and I'm going to write the word grow. I then love to put little dots on all my letters. I do that for everything that I write, even when I'm just writing on paper. I think it adds a really fun touch. I've never really loved my handwriting, so I've always felt like the dots kind of added a special touch to my handwriting. Um, so once I get that written, I decide that I want to add just a few little leaves, and I'm using that same marker. The marker is pretty thick, so it's hard to get any kind of small details. If you're wanting to do some small intricate work instead of the like little leaves that I created, you would want a smaller maybe paint pen or something like that that you could draw more intricate things with. But I love how this turned out, so I'm just going to draw some leaves on the bottom, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw some leaves on the top in the same way, and then this portion is completed. I then take my hot glue and this has like an easel piece in the back so I just put my hot glue on the easel piece and I'm going to glue it to the front of this bag. I picked this bag up at the Target dollars spot and it was five dollars. So once I have that I'm going to take my shovel that I received in my package. I went ahead and spray painted it with some white Rust-Oleum spray paint and then I'm using my same color paint to go over it then I'm using my fabric and ribbon to make a shabby bow. This is going to attach to my shovel um, to give it a more little shabby farmhouse look. I'm just going to take some twine, tie it off in the middle, and then I do take a piece of the, I think, ribbon part and I wrap that around the middle to give it a more finished look. I'm going to take some hot glue, glue it onto my shovel, and then I'm ready to... Um, 
assemble my wreath. So I picked up these flowers at the Dollar Tree. I believe there is uh, four or five bundles there. All I did was remove the tags. I left them intact with their stems and everything. And then I put it through the handles of this bag and then I'm gonna take some twine and I'm gonna attach these uh, florals to the handle of the bag. That way they're secured in there. If you wanted to have more like fluffiness in your bag, you could definitely add some stuffing here and stick your flowers into the stuffing if you wanted to do it that way. Um, once I have that on there, I'm going to take some more twine and I'm going to tie my shovel onto the bag. I'm just using the twine going around the handles again, tying a knot so it's on there securely. And then I will show you how I styled that. So for the second project, I'm going to create some gift labels. And so if you wanted to make this bag into a gift bag rather than a wreath, a simple way to do that is to make some gift tags. I'm going to go ahead and take those sticky um, kind of like clear labels that I got in my package and I'm going to attach one to one of these paper labels. These came from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to take my napkin and I'm going to decoupage that onto another one of those. Now hindsight being what it is, I think that I would have um, rather painted these white before I attached the sticker and the napkin just because it was a very light white bag. Um, I thought the black would be okay because of the chalkboard tag, but I think it would have actually looked better with white. But once I get that decoupaged onto the paper, I'm just going to take a nail file, go around the edges so I have some smooth edges, and then I'm going to attach those together to make one tag. Once I have the tag attached, then I'm going to tie it onto the other handle of the bag. And this is a super easy way to make a gift bag. You could add seeds to this bag or any kind of like gardening tools, and I think that that would be a super fun gift. For this project, we're going to be creating a cutting board bunny sign. So I'm going to take the wrapping paper, the cutting board, and the little galvanized bunny to create this project. And then I'm going to use some ribbon, um, the little truck ribbon, and some ribbon I already had on hand. So I went ahead and covered the cutting board with my chalk paint. And then I'm taking some Mod Podge, and I'm just going to cover that. And I used the wrapping paper and cut out um, the size of the cutting board. And then I'm just going to attach that wrapping paper onto the cutting board and then I'm going to use my file to get off any of the excess wrapping paper. If you don't have a sanding block available, this file technique works really well and it does just the same as the sanding block. I was able to get it off really well and I didn't have any tears or any problems with it. So just in a pinch, if you don't have a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper, the nail file will work just as well. So I took some ribbon that I already had in my stash and I made a little shabby bow. This ribbon is wired so I wanted to make sure it kind of fluffed out a little bit. I did take another piece of the ribbon, wrap it in the middle to kind of give it a more finished look because I felt like this was a little bit more uh, lending itself to being finished rather than just a piece of twine in the middle. Then I took the galvanized bunny and some more of my white chalk paint and I'm going to just dry brush the chalk paint onto the silver part and then glue it down onto the cutting board. So just remember when you're gluing metal, I used hot glue and it was really hot as I glued it on there just because the metal heats up. Then I took some more of the truck ribbon and I'm going to glue that into the middle of the bunny's neck. And then I also took the ribbon that was already on the bunny, glued that to the ribbon, and here it is styled. With you.
For the last project, we're going to create a farmhouse bunny sign, and I'm going to use the um, coffee sign that was in my package. I'm using the scrapbook paper also, and I decided to just cover the entire sign with the scrapbook paper. I think in hindsight, I would have cut a square and only placed it on the front. Um, this does turn out totally cute. I just think that it's a little bulky, and if I had just used a square on top of it and kind of used my... Um, file to sand off any excess that it would have looked a little bit better. So then I took this uh, bunny. It's a wooden bunny that I got at Dollar General. I picked it up last year. I thought it was a super cute shape. I, I created a couple other DIYs with the same bunny. I will post those up in the cards and down in my description box. I'm going to use my white folk art chalk paint again and I'm going to cover the entire thing. I am moving so I couldn't find a lot of my supplies I needed but I'm using this super small brush. Definitely use a chippy brush for dry brushing. It gives it a much better effect. Then I'm going to use some hot glue and glue my bunny down to the front of the scrapbook paper. Once I have that on to the front of the sign then I'm going to just take some of the ribbons I've already been using throughout this video and I'm going to make a bow out of each one of them and glue it onto the front of the bunny. I used the uh, fabric as well here and then here it is styled on my shelf. I think this is really adorable and I just love the colors from the scrapbook paper behind it. Um, they kind of bring out the truck ribbon as well. My world is spinning round, round, around. Oh, I want you now, now, now. My world is spinning round, round, round. And I want you now, and I want you now. I'm going to be creating a shabby bunny wreath. I picked up this wreath form at the Dollar Tree. And I'm actually just using a old sheet. You could use any kind of muslin fabric for this project. Something that's going to tear easily and that you can get strips of fabric that kind of have the torn look for the shabby feel. So all I'm doing is taking my material piece and tying it onto the wreath form and then here it is after I have them all filled in on the ears. For the actual bunny frame part, I'm going to do the first two rings and then I'm going to do the second two rings and then I'm going to continue that pattern all around the bunny like face part. Um, it gives it this really cool woven look as you go around and then you're just going to fluff it out at the very end once you get all of your pieces tied on to the wreath form. So once I have that completed, I'm going to take some ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to make a really simple bow. I just tie, I folded it over two times on each side and I'm just using some twine in the middle to hold it together. Then I'm going to fluff the bow out. I do go ahead and take a piece of the sheet and go around the middle of it. I don't really know that it's necessary for this bow, um, but I went ahead and did that just to give it a more cohesive look. And then here it is styled um, in some decor. <music> going to make a shabby hoop wreath and I was having a lot of fun with the muslin this time. This is actually an old just piece of uh, muslin that my mom had laying around in her fabric stash and I just did the same thing that I did with the bunny wreath. I cut it into strips and I'm just going to tie it the same way around my hoop. So I had a embroidery hoop and this is only one piece of the embroidery hoop. I felt like it was too thick trying to tie the piece of muslin around both pieces of the hoop. So once I get all the pieces tied on, I'm just going to take a longer piece of my muslin, tie it into a very rustic bow, and I'm going to glue it on here. I do kind of trim it up a little bit so that the tails are a little bit closer to the same size. And then that is it for this project. I think it's so elegant and beautiful and I just absolutely love it, styled with the lavender. Like the moon needs the sun, we don't care about the others. You said my world on fire. You're my heart's desire. 
we're going to make a shabby birdhouse, and this project actually turned out so much better than I actually than I originally thought it was going to. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you ever have projects like that. But I'm just taking some antique Waverly wax, and I'm going to cover the entire birdhouse piece. This was in my stash, and someone had given it to me, so I'm not really sure where this came from. But if I had to guess, it came from Hobby Lobby. So I cover it with my antique wax and I'm going to take just some, um, I think this is like classic linen or just an antique white kind of color. I will list it down in my description box. I cover it with that and then I'm covering it with a very light pink from Faux Cart. This is also chalk paint. And then I'm taking my lavender paint from Waverly, which is also chalk paint, and I'm using a Waverly stencil. So I'm not going over this birdhouse with like total for full coverage of my stencil. I want it to look kind of worn. So once I take it off, I'm going to take my little brush and my lavender paint, and I'm just going to kind of dry brush all around the edges and the edges of the top of the birdhouse. I really love the colors of this one together. Um, like I said, this was one of those projects that just turned out like so much better than I originally thought it was going to. So then I just took a little wooden dowel that I got from Hobby Lobby and a bird. This bird also came from Hobby Lobby and it was over in the fairy area. So if you're looking to find some birds, I found it kind of in the wedding section. I'm just going to go ahead and glue the little stick there for the perch and then glue my bird to the perch as well. To give it one final touch, I just took some wired ribbon that also came from Hobby Lobby and it kind of matches the pink in the birdhouse. This is really sheer ribbon, so um, I had like three or four pieces, probably more like four together, and then I just took a piece of twine or no, actually a piece of ribbon. And this ribbon came from um, the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to tie that off in the middle there. And then I'm gonna glue the bow to the top. I added a pearl just for a little fun detail. And here it is styled in some decor. Tell me you'll stay or take me away. I want you for myself every single day. It's So this next project is a farmhouse table runner and this was really easy. I picked up this table runner at I think Dollar General. I'm not 100% sure but I think it came from Dollar General and all I'm going to do is take my same um, muslin pieces and I folded them in half and then I'm just going to tie a knot at the top. Using some hot glue I'm going to glue these as tassels along the edge of my table runner. Um, this is super easy. You're going to go ahead and complete the same process on both sides. I want to show you here just quickly how to um, make them really close to each other or how close they should be together um, to give it like it's a sewn on look. So once I have the first one on I kind of um, push them together just so that they're pretty close together and it gives it this really fun look. You can't really even tell that they're hot glued on rather than sewed on once you get them all on there because they're super close to each other. And I absolutely loved how this turned out and it was so easy and there's no sewing required. I don't know what I do without you You make me smile, what is it that you do? For this project, it's going to be a French country planter, and this was actually just a really easy project. I had this planter, it came from the Dollar Tree, and I had already painted it with white uh, Waverly chalk paint, and I decided to just give it kind of an upgrade, and I'm just using some black acrylic paint. 
I don't go over it really well with my stencil and I do that on purpose because I want to give it that kind of worn vintage feel. Then I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to go over the entire planter with my sanding block. I have this lavender that I picked up at Walmart and I absolutely love how this turned out. It has a really fun country vintage feel to it. I just need you, I don't know what it is you do, I just want you, I just need you, I don't know what it is you do, I just want to love you, I just want to hold you, just want to be with you till we grow old. Well, that is it for today's video. If you stay to the end, I absolutely appreciate it and I hope you hit that like button. If you're interested in some more shabby farmhouse decor, check out these videos up here and as always, wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start and I will see you in my next video.